welcome to NPS Now, your source for news and information about Norfolk Public Schools. I'm your host, Karen Tanner, and with me today is Tyler Marshall. He is a senior LCSE student at Norview High School and his Norview teacher, mathematics and engineering teacher, Carl Meister. Welcome to you both to NPS Now. Thank you. I'm glad to have you here and some exciting news with you. You just won a recent award through the Congressional App Challenge for Virginia's 3rd Congressional District. I know that was exciting. Tell me about that competition. Um, well, I learned about the competition through Miss um, Stead, the head of LCSC. Uh, she told me it was a competition to um, uh, encourage high school students to learn to code. And she knew I already was an avid coder. And I. Uh, how did you get involved with coding? Um, I just had an interest of it from the beginning. I already love computers, so I taught myself how to code. Well, tell me about your app, your winning app. Well, um, before I learned about the contest, I had already made an application for our Norview Robotics team um, for competition to help us um, keep track of our active members for how, how long they had been at the mm -hmm. meetings. So I decided to submit that. So tell us, what is that app specifically? So it's called an uh, hour logger. And it, you, you can sign in and sign out, and it'll save the amount of time you were there. So what did you have to do to kind of write this type of app? What goes into that? Um, you have to like um, think about how you're going to save the amount of time and how you're going to format that, and then make it easily accessible to the people that are going to use it. So kind of kind of talk me through how that app works again. So um, first you have a little piece of paper that has a specific code in it and there's a camera and you can scan the code with the camera and it'll mm -hmm. identify the person and then log them into the data and then they do it again and they'll log out. Mm -hmm. What type of skills does Tyler possess for this? Um, <laughs> well, he's, he's incredibly analytical uh, during the math and engineering mm -hmm. courses. Uh, he always is thinking about uh, what everything implies um, like you said, he's a self-learner. Uh, when he's interested in something outside of the classroom, he goes home and I would imagine he just learns as much as he can about it. Uh, mm -hmm. I've always been impressed with his amount of knowledge uh, even before he enters a subject and his willingness to learn uh, new things. Mm -hmm. um, he isn't afraid to try things and if it doesn't work, uh, that failure doesn't set him back is one of the right. his major assets. Right. How did it feel to win? I was honestly surprised. I just kind of submitted something I had already done. I didn't expect it to win the contest, but it did. Why do you think his app won? Um, I think it was meaningful to the extent that um, the other apps were probably meaningful. I, we didn't get, uh, take a chance to look over all of them, but um, it was helping a school uh, activity uh, and it provided an actual meaningful, useful application for us mm -hmm. because we used to do it by hand and then have students manually enter it into Excel. Um, but also, the fact that he integrated so many different things such as the QR code reader, the, the webcam, um, the relative ease of use with his uh, UI um, all show uh, some amount of professionalism when it came to the actual design of the application. Mm -hmm. What do you like most or enjoy the most about computer science? Um, I love solving problems and computer science gives a unique way to create your own problems and then mm -hmm. solve them yourself. I love that. So how are their skills developed in the classroom for coding? Um, primarily one of the, the things that I think it best affords uh, when you talk about computer programming is the fact mm -hmm. that uh, you get to actually test out a solution to a problem and immediately see if it works or not and then go back and reiterate. Um, so it's useful not only from an engineering aspect but also just from a general um, educational aspect because you actually get to partake in problem solving interactively uh, and instantaneously. Uh, and I think one of the best reasons to actually promote coding is to develop those skills and not just uh, develop specific coding skills which are important but also the problem solving skills that it entails. In addition to that, why do you think it's important for students to understand and learn coding? Um, I think nowadays uh, everything we do is, is has in some manner, some form of computing built in, whether it be a microprocessor. I know nowadays a big thing is Internet of Things, where your fridge, your, your lights, your security system all talk to each other. Um, and so it's becoming more increasingly important to not only understand how they work, but 
uh, how to manipulate them. Um, and I think from a, not only a, a occupational standpoint, but also just as an informed consumer and an informed uh, public, knowing this stuff really, really mm -hmm. helps. What do you like, Tyler, the most about his class? Um, he tells you like it is. He doesn't try to hide the parts that are boring or not fun. He, he tells you everything you need to know, not mm -hmm. just the, the cool stuff. So where do you go from here? I mean, when you graduate, what do you plan to do? I definitely plan to get a degree in computer science and mm -hmm. possibly some, a degree in artificial intelligence. In artificial intelligence. That's interesting. So how are you inspiring your students in your classroom when it comes to coding? Um, well, for throughout the year, um, we will, for just, just recently in one of my classes, we just ended a unit of coding where I allowed the kids to uh, learn on their own in the sense that um, having some guidance but also allowing them to explore on their own I think is a, is a big portion mm -hmm. where they get the freedom to kind of do what they want to do. Um, and then beyond that for our seniors, he got to choose his project. Uh, and I think giving them an investment in, or giving them the opportunity to actually choose something that is meaningful to them just helps build uh, the interest in, in whatever subject they're, they're pursuing. What did your classmates think about you winning this competition? Mm, they were impressed, I think. Um, I don't know if they expected it. They wasn't expected. Huh? And you were surprised. I and was. that's an awesome honor, yeah. especially your senior year graduating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, our school district just talked about an hour of coding throughout the week. Some of our elementary and middle schools were doing that. So, great. Well, congratulations again to you, and thank, thank you, you both for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we want you to stay tuned for more NPS Now. Welcome back to NPS Now. I'm Steve Sutton, the Senior Coordinator of Athletics. Today we have two guests in, in the studio to talk a little bit about football. And we have from Norview High School, the running back, Kevin Marks, KJ. Welcome. Thank you. And then we have the quarterback, Daryl Mack, DJ. Welcome. <laughs> All right. Guys, you had a great season, and congratulations on that. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about the season, the success, 11-3, and three, uh, got through the region, got to that regional final, state semifinal. So, uh, Kevin, what about the season? Uh, from the start, past the league, uh, we really grew. We had a lot of JV players coming out to play a big role in varsity. So it's a us two leaders to um, bring them along and put the confidence in them. Okay. That's about DJ, how, how about uh, the season? Kind of um, I just think capture it for us a little bit. From, from summer workouts, we just – we just all took the pledge to just keep working hard no matter what, no matter through, through no matter what adversity. Um, just keep doing what we meant to do. Um, I think we made history this year. Couldn't get it done, but I think all the goals that we meant to accomplish, we accomplished. Sure. And, and you had a great season. Just, sure. you know, that, that final game was a tough loss. But, sure. again, <clears throat> you mentioned, uh, you know, a lot of individual work. So talk a little bit about your success uh, that you had this year. Um, my fresh, not my freshman year, but my senior year. Um, after my junior year, I knew I had to still come back strong after the after the injury. So I just wanted to have a really breakout year in my senior year to finish it off, to top my junior year, mm -hmm. to show what I have, my um, skills, my skill set, uh, prove to all the college people and the level I'm trying to get to in well, NFL. And, and, you, and you did. I mean, you yeah. play with passion, and that's a, a joy to watch. So. Uh, um, what about DJ? Talk about some of your successes. Um, and you had a lot. Yes, Both sir. of you had a lot. So. Yes, sir. Um, from junior year, I just wanted to show that, you know, I could get better. You know, just from everything that I had to do, from watching film to putting it out on the field. This year coming, coming in, watched a lot of film from last year just to see where I could get better. Um, just that really helped me a lot because I could really see this, the little things that I messed up at and, and how far I've grown just within that time before the season started. When the season started, I just knew that no matter what, our senior class, we had to put, it up, put the team on our backs. So I just wanted to be the leader of that. Okay. So. All right. So, Kevin, let's talk about um, 
some of your past. I mean, you overcame um, a devast it could have been a devastating injury for a lot of people, but you tore your ACL your, at the end of your freshman year going into your sophomore year. So talk a little bit about that injury and then how you overcame that. Uh, being that I had the ACL injury, um, it was hard. It was hard. It wasn't easy. I mean, just like you know that now, it wasn't easy. Um, so the people around me that doing that injury, the coaches, my mom, family, they just stayed with me. So uh, that was that was good for me. Well, I mean, I know what an ACL injury yeah. is, and I know what it takes to come back. And to come back for, for a high school player to come back, I mean, you, you know. A big yeah. pat on your shoulder for that because you listened uh, to the athletic trainer Megan, yeah. uh, and you know her guidance uh, got you over that hump and got you back on that field. So, mm -hmm. um, again, again, that's a that's a big success. DJ, talk about uh, some of the things that you had to overcome, especially maybe waiting <laughs> to play. Um, from freshman year coming down from JV to just sophomore year playing receiver and safety to. To have to actually having to put into the put put the work into just trying to be a Norview quarterback, um, playing on the EJ phase on my freshman and sophomore year really taught me a lot. Just to see where kind of greatness come from, you know, just watching how he worked, just watching how he practiced, just trying to take in little notes about how to be a quarterback um, from middle school. Just just looking up to everybody that's come through Norview, has, has been a Norview quarterback, just really waiting my turn and continuing to work just mm -hmm. to be great. Okay. All right, so let, let's now, this is the only time you can talk uh, positive about Coach Cotton. <laughs> so talk about Coach Cotton, and then also talk about the relationship you guys have with your position coaches, because from my point of view on the sidelines, you guys had a great relationship with your position coaches. Mm -hmm. So, KJ, Take a shot at Coach Cotton first, um, and then let's talk about uh, Coach Payton, your, your running backs coach. Um, coach Cotton was a father figure for a lot of guys on the team, so uh, he really taught us a lot, taught us to mature quick. Uh, it was days where we went on track, and he would pull us aside and tell us what we had. To, he always stayed on top of us, Coach Q. Uh, I, I can't thank him enough. Uh, well, he stayed in my, stayed on my hip pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, taught me, like, if I want to be the best, like, I have to train. I have to stay out after, after practice and work out by myself, like, not even with a group, like, by myself, and just learn myself. Mm -hmm. Learn what I need to work on the craft, and I'm okay. just thankful for all that. I mean, and I, I see that relationship mm -hmm. um, on the sidelines during the game. It's special. Yeah. All right, so, uh, DJ? You can say something nice about Coach Cotton, and then I know you have a really good relationship with uh, uh, Coach DeRee. Uh, coming in uh, after my eighth grade year, <clears throat> that was Coach Cotton's first year, so this 2017 class was Coach Cotton's real first class that he can really work on and develop. So I think we helped him grow, grow as a coach, and I think he helped us a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot to just grow as players and not only players but as young men. It's been countless, countless lessons Coach Ta Coach Kai has taught us just to be men mm -hmm. growing up, brotherhood. It's, I can't thank Coach Kai enough. He's really helped me through my life. Like, How about Coach uh, DeRee? Um, <laughs> I mean, every time you come <laughs> off the field, you go right to him. I mean, right. You don't go get a drink of water, you don't do anything else, you go right, right. to him. So that was an, uh, a unique relationship. Definitely. Um, Coach DeRee has probably had the biggest impact as me being a Norview quarterback. Um, just for, like again from freshman year, I remember his first day coming in telling me that I was going to be a Norview quarterback in two years. Um, from every, everywhere from stand back to after practice to coming early to watch and film. Um, but it's not only Coach DeRee, I had a quarterback's coach, Coach Joe. He's kind of behind the scene, you know, really just helped me work on my mechanics and my craft. But Coach DeRee, I, uh, I can give all the credit to him right now. But it's just we had a special relationship no matter what. And 
I think I think that's the person I miss the most. All right, so talk about uh, your playing years together. I know you guys played middle school football together. I was able to, to watch you guys grow from there, and then all the way through the high school level. So talk a little bit about uh, uh, playing uh, on both of those teams. Doing Azalea, uh, football and basketball, had a lot of fun. Uh, just learning ourself, um, learning, learn about ourselves. Trying to learn the game a little bit more. I know we played both sports, but football was always our passion. Mm -hmm. So uh, every day in practice, we just had a lot of fun. Uh, we weren't we weren't really that good seventh grade year, but eighth grade year we really matured and uh, was the leaders again, just like on Norview. Yeah. Yeah, a progression. You won it there, and you won it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as you went through Norview. So DJ, how about you? What about? Uh, playing with this guy and then uh, just talk about some of your the middle school year and the, mm -hmm. and the high school as well. Uh, just coming up, to, being able to come up together and what I think are the most important years of your life from middle school to high school. Seventh grade, that was my first year playing uh, middle school sports. Just being able to come up and meet guys like KJ, like Tank, like like Nephew, that go to, uh, you go to Norview too. Um, just being able to play with those guys for for most of my years playing sports, period. Um, just gonna miss K KJ's character, you know, goofball, mm -hmm. you know, but when it's time to get serious, that's when he turns his switch on and gets serious. Okay. Um, All right, so let's talk about the future. Um, mm -hmm. What's the next step for KJ? Uh, currently verbal to uh, University of Buffalo. Great coaching staff, uh, really a family type coaching staff. Uh, always hitting the line, text me every night and text me every day. Right. If they can get a chance, and I know they be in meetings and stuff, but really loving the East Coast staff. Uh, visit coming up January 13th to really get down to buy, buy mm -hmm. this coach, coaching staff. So well, all the hard work. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, DJ, I'm how about you? Currently committed to the University of Central Florida. The thing that drove me most of my commitment was just going down and seeing how it was to be a UCF Knight. They really, so, uh, from the time I stepped down on the campus, they treated me as I was already there. Um, okay. Just well, again, congratulations. Yes, um, you know, both of you guys. You know, you got you, you did some great things here, and you know, I'm sure you're going to do some great things at the next level. So, congratulations. Thank you, sir. All right, and thanks for being here. Thank you. More NPS now after this. Welcome back to NPS Now. With us today is Deborah Marshall. She is the Department Chair for Career and Tech Education at Granby High School. And then we also have Barbara Simmons. She is a Career and Tech Education Specialist here in Norfolk Public Schools. Welcome, ladies, to NPS Now. Thank, Thank you. you. And we have you on the show today to talk about our coding initiative. Yes, we had yes. another individual on earlier, a young man, Tyler Marshall. He won a special award through his app that he created for the 3rd Congressional District. So we're going to have you all talk a little bit more about coding here in our district. So for those who don't know, Ms. Marshall, what is coding? Coding is a part of computer science. It's the commands that are designed for the computer to carry out. That's short, sweet, and simple. Yes. <laughs> and in layman's terms, what does that mean? It allows uh, software to do what it is designed to do, it, whether it's the Microsoft Outlook or any, any type of software that you use pretty much in any business has to have commands. Therefore, they have to have coding. And we just finished up coding last week in the district. Tell me about that, Ms. Simmons. Right. Last week was uh, December 5th through the 11th was a worldwide initiative for coding. And uh, we had all of the students in the middle and high school and uh, elementary schools participating in the coding activities. And some of the things that we did is that we had the business and information teachers as well as the technology teachers come together and they came up with lesson plans that they wanted to share. And they did them simultaneously throughout the year, uh, throughout the week in the class. And so students were sharing, working together, they were creating apps, and they were learning how to program. 
And what do we want them to learn from this event? Well, we want them to learn that it's a uh, that coding is really a very popular career area, and that there are many opportunities available for them in that particular field, and that it's a part of computer science. So we want them to feel comfortable with it. And as you know, all students really get excited about gaming, and that's part of. Uh, Gaming is a very big part of uh, computer science. And you've done some gaming activities, but mm -hmm. what grade level do we start introducing computer science to our students? Well, we're fortunate that we have Code Virginia and Code.org. It's a really mm -hmm. great website, and it has a lot of different lesson plans starting uh, generally with pre-K all the way through high school. And if those students go to that particular site, which is what we used a lot of last week, um, the students were able to create their own um, games and activities and basically learn that coding is really just using the binary number one and two, stop and go. Mm -hmm. So. So what does instruction look like in computer science for the elementary and middle level? Well, for the elementary level, it's very basic. It's just basically introducing them to a, uh, and then they use, use a lot of games. They show them how to program a particular game because students like games, and whether they're educational or fun games, that gets their attention. And in the middle school, uh, we've been using coding for a long time in the technology class because those uh, students learn how to program um, VEX computers, and uh, VEX robots, and it's basically just telling those, that robot what to do. And so we've expanded it this year to include the uh, business and information technology programs, and those students are learning how to read code and to write code. Mm -hmm. So for the high school level, Ms. Marshall, what does that look like? For the high school level, we currently have a class called IT Fundamentals, which teaches them computer science principles. And in that class, we talk about coding. The coding is just a part of it. But with the after-school programs, whether it's the engineering programs or the uh, career and technical student organizations, we also incorporate coding in, in those programs also, whether it's through um, uh, different competitions, things mm -hmm. like that. And she mentioned the elementary and middle level, and you were talking about um, the high school level. Why is it important to introduce them to this type of coding and computer science at those grade levels? Well, f exposing students at a, at a elementary level and a middle school level allows students and allows teachers to introduce problem solving um, skills and critical thinking skills mm -hmm. and lay the foundation for all of that. What type of training do our teachers receive for this? Well, in the summer, we um, we, we being the Norfolk Public School Career and Tech Ed Department, we have um, Code VA, we work with Code VA, and they offer a summer training. You can go for one week or two weeks. For one week, you learn about exploring computer science, and for the second week, you learn about AP computer science principles, which is something new being brought on. Mm -hmm. um, and you can come back and you can either incorporate the whole curriculum or different lessons into different levels. Yeah, is it different for the different grade levels with the training? Yes, uh, not just with teachers, but they're also training librarians, they're also training ITRTs. So whatever your group is, is the type of training that you would receive. And it can even be specific to your training. Last summer, there were some science teachers that went with specifics with science and math also. How are our students reacting to this? What are they saying? What are they doing? Uh, they love it. I can tell you there's, um, for the IT Fundamentals class, I can tell you that we started out with one section and we now have three. This is at Granby High School. And we are looking to expand it to the other high schools next year. And there's a waiting list. Oh wow, that's great. So what on the elementary and in the middle school, um, you saw when you all came out that you could hear a pin drop in the room. The students were so engrossed in learning mm -hmm. that uh, coding, and uh, in the elementary, we're in the elementary, we're introducing it uh, so that students will have an interest in and not feel afraid. It's just another part of the math computer science area. Right. We see that coding is here to stay. It's not going yes. anywhere. So what are we going yes. to do to expand our computer science program? At the high school level, we're going to expand it next year to what's called AP Computer Science Principles. We are working with internal and external stakeholders. Mm -hmm. um, the external stakeholders is Code VA, which is our state advocate, which is an offshoot of Code.org to develop the curriculum and to help develop the AP Computer Science Principles test. Mm -hmm. And that would be, that would lead to um, a pathway which finishing a pathway is now part of graduation requirements. So oh. that will help everything. 
When did we begin to introduce our kids to coding? How long have we been doing this here in Norfolk schools? Well, for a while, you know, yes. because code be, uh, coding, uh, an hour of code has been going on for several years in the mm -hmm. public schools, Norfolk, here. And a lot of teachers have been participating in it across the division. And so this particular school year, as uh, Deborah said, we had a, a summer conference that focused on coding for career and technical education. But we have been doing it for some time, um, pretty much in individual classes, but this time we put it together as a whole program area for career and technical ed. So we're, we're excited yes. about it. Yes, great. Well, I'm glad you came on this show to mm -hmm. expound a little bit more on what we're doing here and then what future activities we're gonna be doing in coding. So thank you both for coming on the show. And we'd like to thank you for watching MPS. Now it airs weekly on WMPS Channel 47, or you can view us online at www.mpsk12.com. If you have any great story ideas or information you'd like to share, email us at mps underscore news at mpsk12.com. Again, we'd like to thank you for watching MPS Now.